patient, synkinesis in patients with long-term bell palsy is a reversible consequence of disruption of reciprocal inhibition caused by prolonged absence of proprioceptive feedback. Thank you very it's much, very Chair. Long. It's a very long name, uh, which is, uh, well, very, maybe a bit too descriptive. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Today we'll talk about synkinesis. Uh, synkinesis, sorry, synkinesis is by far the most devastating complication of long-standing Bell's palsy. It has a dramatic effect on patients' quality of life, may lead to a loss of self-esteem, loss of self-confidence, sometimes result in social isolation and uh, can even result in suicidal behavior. Traditional paradigm in rehabilitation of facial palsy contains that if within one or two years there was no full recovery, uh, then further improvements are not to be expected. In 1975, Japanese professor Jun Kimura, now working at Iowa State University, published a fundamental paper, Electrophysiologic Analysis of Aberrant Regeneration After Facial Nerve Paralysis. Since then, the aberrant regeneration is considered by most specialists to be the main cause of facial synkinesis. Professor Kimura wanted very much to join us today for this presentation, but unfortunately, due to some circumstances, he had to fly back to the United States yesterday. Traditional paradigm leaves both the patient and the specialist uh, with a very limited choice of methods and techniques that are aimed mainly at management of symptoms and do not address the fundamental causes of synkinesis. Residuals and complications of uh, Bell's palsy are numerous and the most heavy weights, as we have just uh, noted today, are pathological synchronesis and reduced quality of life. At Crystal Touch Clinic, we have developed an instrumental test for synchronetic correlation. It shows that the efforts of facial muscles on the affected sides are two to five times greater than those on the healthy side for the same facial movements. So you can see here, uh, left and right side, affected and unaffected side of fine patients, and on the left-hand side, healthy side, you can see that when she closes the eye or blinks her eyes, she had, uh, the uh, healthy side is very moderate in uh, exerted efforts, and the affected side on the right hand, on the side of the uh, slide, you can see that it's uh, very active, both muscles around the eye and around uh, the mouth corner. It's even more visible when the person makes a rhythmical uh, broad smile then the difference between the healthy and affected side is even greater. When we experience an emotion, our brain forms mimetic signals to produce the corresponding facial expression. Proprioceptive signals from facial muscles, skin, and facial tissues serve as a sensory feedback, which our brain compares with the ideal pattern that is stored in its library of emotions. The brain then will take incremental corrections to the contraction signals until the feedback from the face matches the intended pattern of emotion. At any given moment, our face is an overlap of two mimetic spectra, one coming from the emotional center of the brain and the other one from the volitional one, so the cortical source. After a long-standing facial palsy, then the facial movements carry a very large volitional component, which means we, the patient's brain uses mimetic amplification all the time for whichever kind of facial movements it is engaged. This example shows, uh, that while uh, analyzing pictures of 13 standard facial expressions of more than 800 of our facial palsy patients, we have noticed that along with synkinesis, we can often observe simultaneous contractions of antagonist muscles. On this example, we can see that the patient is squeezing her eyes tightly and on the affected side, <coughs> sorry, um, her musculus frontalis contracts involuntarily, overpowers the musculus orbicularis oculi and pulls up the eyebrow instead of squeezing uh, the eye. From our point of view, this is a result of uh, motor overflow and lack of reciprocal inhibition on the affected side. Broad smile also. When the patient uh, smiles, that together with zygomatic muscles, the antagonist muscles, which is the pressor anguli oris, and mentalis, 
contract involuntarily, pressing down the mouth corner and thus making the smile asymmetrical. Simultaneous contraction of antagonists during facial movements is from our point of view, again, a result of disruption in reciprocal inhibitions. Practically all patients after long-standing facial palsy develop certain kind, certain degree of facial synkinesis. From our point of view, synkinesis can be regarded as a kind of side effect of disrupted reciprocal inhibition of muscles antagonists. Here we can see the, direct, the vectors uh, of, direct, of contraction direction of facial muscles. This demonstration shows in dynamics how the co-contraction of antagonists distorts the facial expressions on the affected side. Motor overflow from maximal efforts result in synkinetic contractions of muscles followers. In this case, it is the zygomatic muscles. When we are trying, the, 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 we are squeezing our eyes tightly, then the eye, the musculus orbicularis oculi is the muscle driver, and musculus zygomatici zygomat are the followers in this synkinetic movement. <clears throat> During the long recovery, due to lack of sensory, due to lack of sensory feedback, a constant cortical amplification of facial muscles, contractions becomes a habit of the brain. When the regenerating axons reach facial muscles, then the proprioceptive feedback and repetition gradually consolidate synkinetic facial pattern into a conditioned reflex. So the suggested new paradigm for rehabilitation of synkinesis is from our point like this. Synkinesis is a pathological mimetic pattern that is formed in the volitional mimetic center of the brain. Synkinesis is a side effect of disrupted reciprocal inhibition caused by continuous lack of proprioceptive feedback from the face and by constant cortical amplification of facial muscles. Synkinesis is essentially a conditioned reflex. And now the good news. As any conditioned reflex, Synchinesis is per definition reversible by prolonged negative feedback. After one or two years from the onset of facial palsy, the patient often hear from their physician that nothing can be done anymore and they have to learn to live with the residuals and complications. Our consideration that we have uh, shared with you today may suggest that if the new paradigm receives support and confirmation from subsequent research, it can lead to substantial changes in rehabilitation of the patients with residuals and complications of facial palsy. We should welcome new methods, new techniques, and new approaches to rehabilitation of long-standing facial palsy. We should welcome the emergence of a new substantiated hope for the millions of facial palsy patients to improve their facial symmetry, to bring back their long-lost long smiles, and the, very, the most important, to substantially improve their quality of life. Thank you very much.